Hi everyone, glad y'all can make it to our new center, John P. Lowe Entrepreneurship Center. And this is Christina Northstar. Christina Northstar is an old and new friend of mine. We've um, been friends for a while and she owns seven, actually eight today, tropical smoothie cafes. She's also an area developer and um, she grew this, to, she's going to actually grow this to 23 by 2017, right? Mm. And um, she wins top sale, store sales awards, she's a top brand builder, and she's also an accomplished athlete. Um, she competes, she's an elite athlete, and she competes in Ironman, uh, marathons, cycling, you name it, she does it. And um, this is, she's going to talk to us about how she found her finish line. Take it away. All right. Well, first of all, what an honor to be here today and what an honor to have uh, accomplished so much so far in my life to be able to have a story that I'm so excited to tell you about. Um, what a beautiful facility here. First of all, you all are so privileged to have the opportunity to be able to be at a university where you can study being an entrepreneur. Uh, I look at a place like this and I think, oh my gosh, how much more I could have conquered if I could have studied something more, a bit, an entrepreneurship while I was at university. So what I want to do is start today with a story uh, that uh, recently um, I experienced in, uh, on a trip to Washington, D.C. I uh, was elected to go up and represent our franchise, Tropical Smoothie Cafe, at the International Franchise Association Convention, where I would go and I would uh, go to support and lobby for an act called Support Your Local Small Business. What I learned once I said, sure, I'll do it, was that I would go up there and I would be sitting one-on-one -on -one or, or with maybe one or two other people with me in the offices of our congressmen and senators. So my red sirens were going off everywhere. First of all, I've never lobbied for any political um, action, and especially directly in the House of Representatives and on Capitol Hill with congressmen and senators. So I fly up to DC the day before we have a full debriefing. So um, there are professionals there that basically taught me what to say, what not to say, what to do, how to speak with a politician. And a politician at that level that's extremely busy and probably may have five to ten minutes for me. So I have to get in and make my point and do it and do it quick. So we go through and they say, um, basically, as I'm looking for the magic formula of what to say, just tell your story. Just tell your story. So then I think, oh, well, that's easy because I love to tell my story. I do guest speaking about it all the time. I talk with friends and people and business, other business associates all the time about my story. So um, then they say, turn to the person on your left and tell them your story. And I turn to the left and I immediately say, against my normal nature, I'm not ready. Um, I was really frozen with a how to really tell my story and talking to a politician. So I go home that night and I think, well, it's not going to really uh, do much for me if I spend all night looking for the magic numbers that I could give to the politician to say, hey, protect this, support this act, protect this bill. I pretty much just had to just tell my story. So I go, uh, I show up the next day and uh, first stop in the House of Representatives, my first visit there ever, and I go to David Jolly's office, a representative of Pinellas County, our congressman, and I walk in and I, and I pass through his, and they, all these congressmen and senators, they have an office before their office filled with their aides and their support, uh, their su support representatives, and uh, I walk through and I go into his office, and it's a beautiful presidential blue with brown leather chairs everywhere and pictures of him with important people and I sit down and at that point I also am only with one other person so I still am kind of seeing some red sirens because I'm thinking I don't really have much of a plan but I just know that I have to speak from my gut 
and just tell him the best that I can within the lines that I've been taught where I'm coming from, why I'm here today. So this is what I said. 13 years ago, I went to Panama City, Florida to do an Ironman. And I was up there and I um, was particularly a picky, healthy, uh, minded person. So everywhere I went, I always w would ask questions about what they put into their products and, and um, uh, just the ingredients and the freshness, you know. So uh, we, w we went to one place and it was uh, completely all wrong. Uh, the, the definitely something I was not ready to eat before such a big competition. So um, I leave and I go, to an, I go to the next place and I ended up walking into my first tropical smoothie cafe. First time ever. Can I get a show of hands of how many people have been into a tropical smoothie cafe? Okay, a lot of you will know what I'm, what I'm talking about then. So I walk in and I look at the menu and I am automatically impressed and um, excited because I see all these fresh sa sandwiches and salads and wraps and I see all these smoothies and all this variety with all these healthy supplements and things you can add. And I walk up to the register and I ask the girl at the register all these questions about the products. And she answers everything as I would hope to hear. So I, um, I order and I have an excellent experience. But even greater was it was the first time that I ever walked into a business and I, and I thought, I really identify with this. Like, I, could, I could have a business like this. And I would be really proud to have something like this that I could offer to the community and I could be a speaker about it. I could be out, at, you know, I, um, out in the open and to promote <coughs> healthier choices and making healthier, uh, having the options for healthier minded uh, smoothies and food. So soon after, I opened my first Tropical Smoothie Cafe. And the catalyst for this was one of America's greatest business models ever, which is franchising. Because of franchising, it gave me the courage and the platform to become a business owner, but yet be part of a bigger brand full of systems and processes of, uh, prove it with proven methods. So the franchise model, um, a lot of people don't know, is that you actually are buying into a franchise, but you're only buying the ability to use the products and uh, the products, the processes, um, all of the uh, proven system of running that brand. And, um, and then you take it and you run it as your own individual small business owner. So I was able to become an entrepreneur or a business owner faster through this method. I still, I maintain all of the autonomy as a business owner to be able to function the same as any small individual business that you see around town. So my success or failure is up to me but yet I have a system that I can always rely on for uh, methods and growth and success. So then I say, Mr. Jolly, I was even able to take this to a greater level because I loved it and I, I believed in it so much and I knew that more, more parts or places around town needed more tropical smoothie cafes and more people needed tr tropical smoothie cafe in their life that I was able to take on a role where I could help other people become their own business owners and open their own tropical smoothie cafes. So that is what I continue to do today is that I not only have my eight individual tropical smoothie cafe locations around town, but I help to build other people. I meet people one-on-one -on -one and, and they say I, from the very uh, ground up, I want to open one and we figure out, is this a fit for your life? All the way through to finding your first location, to your construction, to opening your, your doors, hiring your first employees, HR support, payroll, marketing, all the aspects of business. So I uh, um, essentially end up being a business mentor and coach. 
Today I have up to 130 employees at my eight different locations alone. And we have six more expected to open by 2017. Uh, on top of the, the 17 stores that are within uh, Tampa Bay. And when I say Tampa Bay, I mean all of Pinellas and all of Hillsborough County. Anyone that lives in that area wants to open one in that area. If you were to say, I want to open a store there, that myself and my husband would be the people that you'd actually work directly with. So Mr. Jelly and I, we, um, uh, we say our niceties and uh, um, I go off to, to meet the next, um, to meet the next representative, or the, our next congressman, who was Gus Billy Ruckus. Uh, he has the northern Pinellas and, and uh, north area. So um, then, I, so I go up into Gus's office, and again, there's the pre-office before his office, and uh, his aides are sitting there, and they're like, ah, you know, uh, he has this meeting with you, but he's been stuck in this meeting for the, with the Energy and Conservation Committee for the last uh, five hours, and it doesn't look like he's getting out because they're all trying to vote on five bills today, and uh, they've only made it through two. So what we're going to do is we're going to take you down to him where all the congressmen are sitting in a room kind of like this, like you've seen on TV, but they all have microphones and name tags in front of them. We're going to take you down there so you can meet him when he gets a little break from that. Like, okay, Red Sirens again. All right, let's, let's, let's go. Um, so we go down there, and um, he has a break, and I'm, I'm in this hall full of blue suits, and I'm learning by now they're different senator pins and uh, what, what, they're, what the pens stand for, and he comes out, and we're standing in the middle of uh, a hall full of congressmen and other people, probably like myself, that were trying to get a minute or two or three for me, and um, I tell him a real quick three-minute version of my story um, and what I'm there for and um, to support the act for protecting small uh, local uh, businesses. And uh, he explains he comes from a background of business owners and that uh, he, he certainly supports the act. David Jolly said the same thing too, actually, after that huge speech that I gave to him. And uh, uh, then, uh, and so we go, we go on our way. Next, and finally, I go over to Capitol Hill where um, I'm going to Senator Marco Rubio's office. Okay, that's a big name right now, especially. And uh, so we go over Marco Rubio's office, and um, there are even there's bigger offices and more aides than any of the ones I'd been to yet. And so they they say, you know, Mr. Uh, Mr. Rubio's not in the office now. As when you run for president, you don't hang out in your office in Washington D.C. as often. So we, we got to meet with uh, a group of his aides, who then took us into um, a, a very nice conference room. And uh, we all go and we sit down at the table. And at this point now, it's me and about 20 other representatives like me that are there to support this act. And then there are you know, his aides. And I sit at the table. And I realized for the first time that day that I am the only female at the table. And I have been the entire day. So I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, rather than red, rather than orange, but I see green. I see green lights go for the first time because I had already knew what, that I, what I was going to say. And I was speaking from the right place in my gut, but now I had the... Uh, the moment to have a voice as the only female in this room with Senator Rubio's aides and all of these other representatives that were business owners from the state of Florida. So moments like that lead you to think, uh, I am so proud that for everything that I've been through and for being able to be at this moment at this table as a business owner today. So End of story. The the bill, by the way, it'll take a, it'll be it'll take about another year uh, while they're while they're still passing votes, um, and uh, so I'll probably have to go back again and 
and lobby for it, but I'll, I'll know more, I'll know exactly what I'm going to say uh, next time. So with that, I want to talk today a little bit about some of the biggest questions that people ask me about owning a, a business and being a part of a brand where it's easier to look at, we're all following the same system, but some do better than others. Some fail, some succeed. So there's a, um, a philosophy, or better yet, like a, a five-step life cycle that I consider that, uh, that we, we go through. And I say we because my husband, who is my business partner, is every bit of everything that I'm about to say today and go through in this presentation. He just wasn't in Washington, D.C. in the, in the uh, congressman, senator's offices. Um, so with that, I would like to, to move forward. And I have my, my clicker, Lori, here. Um, we talked about use this force to set clear goals and visions and work with those every day. What motivates you? So I talked about in my opening story. I think it's pretty uh, clear what, motiv what motivates me the most right now. Uh, and um, along with athletics and success and, and the drive to, to do more, uh, but figuring out what motivates you. Before I walked in here today, someone said to me, it's amazing how you see the difference in students when they're working on a project that is just a project for school. It's just an, it's an assignment they have no interest in. But the minute that they get something that they are completely interested in, which is tapping in, then they run with it and they love it. And that's why you love being in this division. Yeah, you gotta take a, You have to do a lot of things that you don't want to do, but that's part of that's part of life. To end up, to get your training, to end up to to where you want to be. How do you connect with what you do? So uh, some people call this maybe integrity selling. Do you uh, you want to interact and be in the moment with your customers? or in the moment with what's occurring and giving it, giving it your, your full. <laughs> so this is basically the, uh, this is basically step one. And I won't ask you to raise your hands even though I'd love to know how many people in this room are right here today trying to connect to the vision, trying to create the vision. Let's just try to figure out our core desires and what drives us to be better. Let's start there because mine are always changing, uh, and that's the beauty of it. And that's why this life cycle continues over and over with every business and every level that, that you'll grow. Oh, well, you saw the last sign. Um, then um, moving on, our, uh, once we, you tap into your core desires, you're able to match them with the network in your life. The link between you, your business, and the rest of the world, this is how you start to make it happen. So when you are able to figure out what's coming from what, what drives you, you're able to look out into your web of life and uh, friends especially, bounce your ideas off your friends Bounce your ideas off of, maybe it's um, your idea that's coming from your, a, a gym or a school or your family. or so, But bouncing your ideas off and figuring out a little bit more, taking it to the next level, does this fit, talking it out loud, it usually will help you to figure out, is this, is this really it for me? Is this what I want to do every day of my life and make money? So sometimes you, this will actually help you the best to figure out Maybe I need to go back to the drawing board. The next up, professional web. Well, you have to do something every day to stay on top of someone's mind. I have, um, in Tropical Smoothie Cafe, uh, we have um, 454 stores across the United States. I didn't mention that yet. and. Um, 
We have uh, a national marketing agency, a national PR agency. We have a national social media agency. And Tampa Bay, I manage all of the tropical smoothies in Tampa Bay. So what I want to do is uh, lock in an even greater level of marketing and advertising and being on top of people's minds in Tampa Bay. So in addition to all of the national media we have, I have a local marketing agency, I have a local social media agency that helps me to reach out to the community and to small businesses to do everything from um, uh, being in the newspaper. You might see us, uh, my, one of my favorite methods is um, being out on billboards. I hope some of you guys see the ones on 275 every now and then. Um, being on the radio, being on uh, TV. But something that you can do, and even here, in, uh, here at this university, you already are taking the step by just being here tonight and listening a little, to a little bit more. The more you listen to people's stories, the more you're able to bounce your own story off of yourself and to continue to figure out if that really is connecting and how you can run with, with your vision. Stand out in a crowd and make yourself a celebrity in your field. Um, this one makes me happy because I, um, I sometimes feel that way, but it's be by being the smoothie lady. <laughs> so um, I used to be in my shops every day, and, um, and my, the way that I see it and saw it was if you, had, if you lived in St. Pete around even my first shop in the Tyrone area and you had never been into a tropical smoothie, you were missing out. So I kind of felt like I had really interacted with the whole, the whole entire community, whether it was face to face or just them you know, coming through my, my stores. But then it, would, it started to resonate. I would go out to eat and people would go, oh, the smoothie lady. I would be at the grocery store. I'd push into my cart. Oh, the smoothie lady. You know, they didn't know my name. They just called me the smoothie lady. And that's fine because they loved my smoothies. And they came often and they told others about it. And that was the goal. I have been on TV blending smoothies. I have been on TV making wraps and uh, sandwiches. Um, in the paper, at events, um, on the radio, uh, multiple, many, multiple times. So, and that way, I mean, that was my, that was my point. And let me tell you, when you start reaching out and you're doing things like that, that definitely continued to drive my motivation and my success, my inspiration for doing what I'm doing. Because I was so excited to get out. It's as simple as making a smoothie. But it's you want to, but knowing that you're the best and that people love it. So yes, smoothie celebrity, do one thing to stay on top of people's or someone's mind every day. I have a lot of different programs. I have professional um, text programs. I have professional uh, or um, you know business text programs. We text you deals. Um, I've just created an app that you can pay with your phone and, and get rewards and get deals texted to you. Um, the, uh, the, but all the different, the different methods that, that I use, so maybe I can just send just one little ping, you know, or one little, or of course Facebook um, and, other, and other social media. But there's something that happens every day that gives me peace of mind that it's out there. So going beyond your network, okay, so, and we're going to click slow here because there's some really good stuff on this slide. Um, we've connected, we've networked, we've talked about it, it's solidified what we want to do, we feel good about it, we've reached out, we've kind of thrown it out to some of our, our closest people, breaking through um, one, one boundary, and now comes the even toughest part of all, it's being ready to take the risk. Facing your fears. If we can, um, oh, well, first of all, I definitely, great studies have shown that successful people are those that are willing to put themselves out there. You can't be, you can't be scared. And if you are scared, if you are seeing red sirens, you got to learn, and even while you're here and you're studying to be an entrepreneur, you have to learn how to fight your red sirens and turn them green. 
So if we can get a good click, we're first going to start with financial risk. And we'll take one more click. Let's take a look at some of mine. In 2004, I opened my first store. I definitely wanted to add against all doubters. Um, I think maybe everyone doubted me, uh, but maybe not everyone said it. My, um, I know that uh, at first my family, you know, they, they certainly weren't sure. I had gone to college, I worked in the corporate world, I had a great job, and I was going to quit it all and open the smoothie shop and be this successful business owner. So first, that's a little hard for some people to kind of, you know, chew. I had some doubters, for sure. The second, as soon as we opened my first store within three months, I signed my second franchise agreement, and I knew I wanted to be on downtown 4th Street in St. Petersburg. I knew that was a money spot. I knew that's where we needed to be. I knew our demographic would love us there. So my husband and I took it to another level, big jump immediately. We decided, let's do our own development. Instead of paying um, a landlord, why don't we do our own development that we can have other tenants in that, then, that can also pay us? And we're paying our mortgage to our, or paying our rent to our mortgage to ourselves. We were 28 years old and somebody loaned us $1.6 million. And I don't mean somebody, it was a real bank. They, <laughs> so, um, you know, of course the numbers work and everything here that we're, we're talking about and finance is being, is being calcula it's calculations, right? So of course we had our business plan done and uh, we, the numbers worked and they proved for success. If we built this plaza and we rented it out and we charged this much for rent and ourselves and, um, and the beauty of it. We did this construction and opened up in 2007. It ended up being a, a two year project to demolish on 4th Street uh, and rebuild a brand new building. Number four, right after we opened the second store, which was supposed to be, this was our, this was our, gonna be our gangbuster store, downtown North 4th Street, St. Pete. We came, we had the opportunity to buy the area development rights for Tampa Bay. I don't put this out there very often, but I thought for the sake of the education, of knowing what it takes and what we've been through, I did put this number up here today. Somebody loaned us more money, $1.1 million, to buy the area development rights for all of Pinellas and Hillsborough County. And what that meant is what I still do today, is that anyone that ever wanted to open their own Tropical Smoothie Cafe business then I would be that person and my husband that they would work with to, to go through the entire business development life cycle. It's, it's a pretty, pretty cool business model. I think I could do maybe just one solid speech on the uh, beauty of the area development franchise system. And um, next, in um, 2009, we opened our store number three, uh, 2004. Um, 13 we opened store number four and then to really go gangbusters we bought two existing stores that same year in Brandon Florida which living in uh, I live in the Tierra Verde Paso Grill area living there that's quite quite a drive so now we're even we're already we're extending out going okay we're we're feeling pretty good about our management structure here that we know now that we can that we're building a team we're putting managers into place and um, they survive without me being there because when I had one I thought that place would crumble without me I would cry if I couldn't be there to experience something that happened or help a customer and over the years it's been now it's uh, learning to build a team of people that can help you do this and you can grow together. I have this management team that I love and we're like a fam family and you know, just all trying to really um, work together and even kind of compete. Like, who, what's your sales today? What's your sales, you know, where are you at? How are you, you know, and, and just sharing and the, it's a, our own new internal network 
within the network of what's going on in Tampa Bay and the entire franchise. Okay, so um, then we open our store number seven in 2014. This was another real estate project. We bought the land, rent, um, redeveloped it, and built a, built a tropical smoothie. I didn't put any, any financial numbers on that one. Um, and then just this week, just this week, I sent a team into the store down on Dale Mabry and Neptune, and we bought the store on, uh, in South Tampa. Because we're moving over. We're, we're ready to build, build the, this, uh, this side of the bay some more and, um, and bring, bring my team over. So that's just a quick glimpse of the major things that, that we've done in, in regards to financial risk. But the big thing is, believe me, it, it, took, it took a lot of fear. There's less fear now because I, I know that our, calcul our calculations uh, are pretty, pretty near um, dead on and, and our, what we're capable of. Next, our next risk is our ego. Uh, one thing that keeps us from taking risk is we're so afraid that we're going to fail. So sometimes you'll think about your vision or think about what you want to do or think about the loan or the people that may help you get there and then you might fail or that you just talked about it so much and how this material and then it might fail. But that failure may end up being the best thing that you've ever done. But you'll never know if you don't try it. Oh, the last one, which um, on, the, on the previous slide, um, I added recently, because as I've grown, I learned there's one more thing, one more type of risk that I really, really had to get comfortable with. And it is the risk of believing in others. If I want to be a huge multi-unit business with more and more, and believe me, we have plans for more and more locations, then I have to believe in our staff. I have to believe and our managers to be able to run with each unit that they completely run and that they completely manage and build that success. But what I, and what I have to continue to do is drive the life cycle of success and drive the processes that this brand offers in our growth and in our change and as Tropical Smoothie Cafe. So in other words, too, a large part of it is that um, we are mentoring and leading our staff. Many of our staff, and one of the, I'm maybe jumping ahead here, but um, most of our staff start from the ground and move all the way up. Most of all of our managers come in as, a, um, as maybe a, a minimum wage or um, a, you know, hourly employee, and the next thing you know, they're making full-blown salary, leading their team with, uh, full, um, with a full uh, um, bonus structure and um, insurance plans and um, a full support system that happened just within a few years by, it's almost like our, our college, our Tropical Smoothie College, of how fast you can advance once you get in. So that's really been a beautiful part of the process in, in the growth. Okay, so financial risks. All right, we made it through that. Went to banks, went to people, got turned down, tried again, tried again, found some money. Um, so now we better be really ready to work your tail off, to work really hard. And I said this before, and I'll say it probably a couple more times. You have to want it every single day. You have to want it really bad. You have to have daily rituals and a daily plan every day that reminds you of what you're working towards. Some people in the room that, that know me, they know that um, I keep a plan on my refrigerator. And every day of my life before 7, 7.30 a.m., I have completed that, that plan. This one in particular, it is a, a, the aspect of, of training and, and, uh, and coaching. 
if I have a plan for my athletic goals on my refrigerator every day of my life, and I never want to let myself down because it's only me by not following through with my plan. And once you do it, it becomes so much a part of your life that it's like you forgot to brush your teeth and something feels weird if you're not in alignment with that. Next. You must think, what can I do to be better? To be better than the next dot, dot, dot. If it's business, if it's a um, school competition. Or tonight I hear this, there's a, an incredible a pitch competition here. So that, uh, exciting. So you have to, to think, what can you do to be better? Next. I'd like to just add this in here because sometimes lazy people, I don't really connect. But if you, <laughs> but you, if you are lazy and you're trying to be a business owner, you're trying to be a leader, someone's going to figure you out. Someone's going to figure you out. Give yourself the edge. So I'd love to mention, I talk to my husband about this all the time and uh, how much the edge is so important. The edge is maybe your, your presentation, maybe your shoes, your, your clean look, your haircut, how you present your, yourself is one thing, but then someone can, uh, you know, there are certain people that you may do business with that may look down at your shoes and see that there's a hole in your toe or you're something, you know. Um, for me, let's say the edge is in, in a tropical smoothie cafe, someone may come in and look at every corner, every baseboard, look up in the ceiling, at the tiles, look in the bathroom, is it clean? Those are edges not everybody looks at, but there are people that do come in and they may, and if they ever say to me, oh my gosh, your ceiling vent um, has some dust in it, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I have, I have failed to keep up with that. But those are the edges showing someone's on top of it, changing that light bulb. And if, the next time, let's say you go, go into a cafe, gosh, if you can ever find one in a Starbucks, then um, points for you. And see if you can find something that is not, that the edge is not clean on. That the, a light bulb's out. Oh, like I'll go in, I'm like, oh my gosh, they don't have one light bulb out. You know, and, there, and there's tons of light bulbs. Or so, but, um, but the edge, and that matters maybe not to everybody, but there's a select part of your community that looks at that. Be the maniac. I love this one. I'll try not to talk for too long about it. Uh, when we opened my first store uh, and, um, and on and on when I used to be in my stores blending every day, I was absolutely a smoothie maniac. I demanded um, good smoothies. I demanded that they were made right, that they all taste right. It was uniform. Every time you come into a store and get a smoothie, it tasted the same as hers. It tasted the same every time, everywhere you go. The first, uh, when I first opened, I remember the first time someone complained and uh, uh, he came and, and he had, um, he didn't want tomato and, and he got tomato and that's a big deal. Tomatoes, you know, bananas and strawberries, those are big deals. Those are deal breakers for me, you know? So, uh, so he didn't, and he was furious, you know, and I had let him down. And I had just begun, and I was a new business owner. So I probably maybe shed a tear in the back or was very close to it. Believe me, I've gotten much, much tougher over the years, but there's definitely that integral part of me that thinks that we can be as close to our best and it work to be our best all the time. And if a mistake is made, then the choice that's left is how well can you resolve it. The other part of um, being the maniac, if we can go, if we can go back just one, um, is the other part of me as, um, as a competitive athlete. So, alongside with everything that we're doing, all those risks up there that you saw, all the hard work that's going on, and, you know, and people are saying to me, you will not be able to keep continuing to um, race competitively. 
you will not be able to continue to um, do what you do at your level athletically. And those kind of things really fuel my fire when they say that I, I, I wouldn't be able to do it. So I just thought, okay, I'll have to wake up earlier. I'll have to expand my day and I'll have to look at things a little bit, a little bit different. My husband and I realized it was very parallel that the harder that we trained and something like it personally as, um, as marathoning and triathlon was, and the more that we succeeded in these races, the more that we succeeded in business because it drove us so strong and it made us better leaders and it made us better. We'd come out of the weekends from races ready to break down the doors and conquer the world because we just crossed the finish line and we did pretty good and we celebrated and life is good. Now let's get back to our business and go for it again. So we have, we have, um, we had our two small children, uh, Andreas and Alessandra, age five and three. And um, when I had them, I converted from doing more of an uh, Ironman um, background to competitive marathoning. And when I say competitive marathoning, I mean I don't just want to go out and run 26.2 miles. I want to I race 26.2 miles as hard as I can for 26.2 miles. It's like running um, north of downtown Tampa all the way to downtown St. Pete as fast as your little body can take you. Oh my goodness, the, the thrive and the success for what that has done for us and continues to do for us today is mind blowing where it teaches us to continue to be able to face something that seems so big because marathon is big and people ask me all the time and I know people in my neighborhood see me run every day and they think there's that crazy woman because I run at least 10 miles every day there's a couple of my neighbors in the back back there and I think they must think I'm crazy but it's a part of my plan and what it has done by making me have by having these personal goals that feel so big that there's no easy way there's no shortcut to the finish line at a marathon there's no easy way through so and you have to manifest it every day of your life you have to want it really bad now I'm talking about marathon you got to do a little bit of it every day so when you manifest by doing it every single day and then you one and then you're at the race which felt like a dream and you're crossing the finish line, it's like manifestation of your reality right in front of your face. And it's, it's, um, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing in my case. So that's what has continued for me personally to, to drive. Two and a half weeks ago today, I was in Amsterdam, running in the Amsterdam Marathon in Holland. And let me tell you, being able to travel big and run big races overseas and, and other countries and all around and all around the world, do world championships, nas national championships, local championships. That stuff, that stuff is for, for me was once upon a time in my dreams. In my dreams. So being the maniac, that was the uh, the end of that last piece, which ended with it also by, by being competitive athletes or just being healthy minded, it helps to make me and us better leaders and more genuine about leading and talking about this brand, about making better choices in your life, saying, eat good, feel good. That's our brand's motto. the hardest worker if we can go um, remember that the hardest worker can be talent when talent does not work hard did everybody listen to that the hardest worker can be talent when talent does not work hard I didn't think I was smart when I was in college but I was the best studier 
So I got, I tried to get the best grade in class, but only because I studied really hard. There was no way around it. Now we get to our, our, our final step here. Okay, so we're grounded, we're in business, or we've connected, um, we've networked, we had our risk, we're working so hard, and we're feeling it, we're in it, we're driving it every day. We're starting, and we're getting a little more grounded, and a little more solid, and what we're doing, we're not just faking it till we make it, we're, we're, we're making it, or maybe still faking it some, but we're, we're there, we're doing it. You still, you continuously want to keep yourself inspired and innovative and, and whatever that aspect is that you're working towards. So for me, um, reading, reading books, reading documentaries, uh, oh, there's so many great ones out there right now. Of course, there's Apple, but so many of like these um, developers that have become multi-billionaires because they sat down in a room and, and you know, created, well, of course, there's Facebook, but there are so many documentaries out there. If you want to really fuel yourself one night, go to your Apple TV or Netflix and look up some documentaries. This one is so important. Surround yourself with people who inspire you. Surround yourself with people that are either uh, more successful than you or just do inspiring things that have something in them that make you want to be better. They will bring you up without you even realizing it just by being in their presence. If she can do it, I can do it. If he can do it, I can surely do it. But Reap the rewards. Financial independence, so of course uh, this is definitely an inspiration. Um, and will definitely help to keep fueling your fire. As I, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we travel a lot for, we, well, we like to travel to big places to race. And, um, and that's, that's certainly a, a huge part of it. That as we have grown, we've been able to expand our horizon on where we travel, what we can discover and see, how we want to open our minds, and then come back ready to break down the doors. Next, small moments, oh my goodness, you know, these are, um, when you're working with customers and, and um, when you're working anywhere, doing anything, in my stores, is it making sandwiches, is it um, making smoothies, is it working on the register, and I can't tell you how many people develop relationships with our customers, and they love, they love them, they, the customers, come to me or find my email, send me messages how much they love the guy at the register who was really so genuine about what he was doing and, 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 hel and helping him figure out what he wanted. Having staff tell you that they love their job, they love you know, where they work, they love the people, they love the environment, they're happy. Have been able to offer small moments, you know, so someone can really, if I really break it down, being able to go into a store and spend five to seven dollars on a smoothie, that better be a happy small moment, right? That better taste really good and, and give you just a moment to calm down. Family, oh my goodness, if there's nothing else that inspires you than, when, than having two small children or my, my first child, uh, when that occurred, we, we realized immediately, you know, we weren't slowing down. We were actually fueled even more to do good and to be leaders and to accomplish more for our children, to do more good now in the community and reach out even more. So family and being able to have the flexibility, uh, the flexibility that I have where I worked all those years in my stores, blending and working all day, you know, and uh, face to face with everyone. I thought it'll crumble without me. And then next thing I know, we have multiple stores to get me right up to the perfect point where I, I had a child and I didn't have to be in the stores like I used to be. So to right at the, at the right time in life when I had the flexibility 
to be able to drop my kids at school and pick my kids up from school and be there with them as a family, but yet still be able to be a leader and get it done and be completely fueled as a business owner, as I hope I sound here tonight. So be motivated to continuously transform to the next greater version of yourself and your company, your vision. After this, we go back to step one. Because at that point, once you've gotten through all of that, you've grown and evolved so much, it's time to go back and take a new look at yourself. Because you're a new person, your standards have 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 stepped up. For example, from our first order to our second, we evolved so quickly where we thought, instead of renting, let's build our own building. You know, let's be our own landlord. With every store and with everything, every bit of this is what has driven our success, starting from the inside out. Some, and continuously doing things so that we stay hungry. And, and I, I say to people all the time, people that want to meet with me to discuss opening their own tropical smoothie cafe, that even after being open for 12 years, and it's, it, I'm, it's not easy, it's not always easy, but I still feel a sense of this honeymoon phase with the brand. Because even the brand has grown and grown and grown. And now we offer more things that I'm more proud of with, with vegetable smoothies and kale and spinach and things that are like really, really more than ever going give to you, give your body a true boost. It's the real deal going in that blender that people are leaving and coming in, buying and drinking every day. So I feel even better about, about that. So that's pretty much um, the end of... Uh, of what I have to say today, and I hope that uh, I hope that it resonated with some of you. And I, I will open the floor up to questions. Um, if anyone has any questions, or uh, you can pull me aside after this um, while we uh, go to the networking area. Um, but thank you for listening to my story. It's exciting, and um, there's still a lot more to come. But so, that's it. Yes. I'm heavily interested in franchising. Is it possible to start franchising right out of school, or would you consider waiting? Yes, it's very possible. I um, I graduated college and opened my first store maybe two years after. Yeah. Um, and the the when I mentioned it earlier, the beauty of franchising is that you've got this platform of of information and processes and, and models and tools to succeed all your the a franchise should supply all of that to you operations menus menu boards research recipes marketing designs that stuff takes a lot of time and costs a lot of money to do on your own so i would i would say it's it's not too early to start for sure so you're recommending franchising over starting your own business I'm not saying, I'm not saying that. Um, I'm just telling you where um, my particular experience has come from, and it's been, it's been a slam dunk <laughs> with with franchising for me. So, um, not the case for everyone, but um, I really love what I do and love the brand. So I think that's a core piece. But yeah, I I, I wouldn't recommend one or the other since. I haven't tried the other. Uh, yes? As far as getting that big loan that you got, um, were they investing more in like you and your husband, or was it like the numbers? What did they look at? It was the property value. The property value um, on 4th Street North. It's a, it's a real hot area. Property values are higher. Um, so what it took, it was for, you know, to demolish the, the buildings that were there, and then to develop the new building. So it was property, construction, and the value of the building once it was completed. And to build the tropical smoothie. 
And then beyond that, we built out the rest of the space for other tenants that, that were there. Yep. Yes? Um, how difficult was it to get that finance? Hard. It's never, it's never typically easy. Maybe now it's easier than ever because we have established relationships with all of our bankers. When we come walking in the door, they know who we are, either, you know, with all of the, the different stores and so many, you know, different accounts. And um, we have proven success in our loans. So we've never failed in any loan. Um, but the first one, the first two, you know, dep depending on um, the numbers. So the first thing, and this is a good um, note, I think, is uh, you can, there's a S, the SBA association. You might, guys may cover that sometime at the school here. But um, you can apply um, through banks that offer SBA loans. And these are government subsidized loans that say to the bank, hey, if you give this loan, then we'll support, uh, what is it, Brian? It will guarantee 80% of the loan. He's my, he's my finance expert. <laughs> and um, so then what they do is um, it makes it a bit easier for someone to get in and get a um, SBA, Small Business Association loan. And actually, my first loan that I ever got for the first, first store, not for the over million dollar development, I got through an association called the Tampa Bay Black Business Bureau. This was because I got the loan because I was a minority uh, as a female. Female. There's a female sector in the SBA that particularly supports giving females loans that are guaranteed by the government to help to get us into business. The Tampa Bay Black Business Bureau is somewhere in Ebor, and it's been about 13 or 14 years since I've been there. But um, it's definitely, I have to say, that if you guys are looking for financing and are a female, I would recommend go home tonight and look at the SBA website and look at the minority section. Maybe one more question? Second? Um, you mentioned in 2007 you opened up your second cafe. I was just wondering when the recession starting in the following year, um, if you had any obstacles and what you had to do to overcome them. That's a great question. That I'm also, um, even though it didn't, it wasn't easy, um, but we succeeded, all my stores succeeded, none closed down. Our sales stayed the same, but didn't go down. So while the rest of the world, it seemed, were going backwards, we stabilized, stabilized in our store sales. In a time where there's uh, limited jobs available and the economy is going down, we're, we're still opening Tropical Smoothie Cafes because it wasn't even, uh, not even my stores, but we were opening uh, with other franchisees in Tampa Bay then. Where we are, um, let's call it a totem pole of businesses, when income was lost, when the economy goes down, instead of going to nicer restaurants, you know, people would kind of scale back and come to more of quick serve. So that quick serve industry is right there. It's in a pretty nice padded area. Be, so um, we still were able to, you know, um, inherit new customers uh, that were maybe going to, to fancier places or that were watching their budget. Um, so, I, yeah, we, we still grew. We still hired. Um, we still had jobs to offer. Uh, we didn't grow as fast as we're growing right now. I'd love to, if we could, go back there's one slide, if I could just show you, in the very, very beginning. Um, mm -hmm. And Yeah, uh, there. We um, jumped over this one pretty quick, but I definitely, you know, wanted to show you. This is a little bit of where we are, you know, right now, which is called Hotspot. <laughs> we are really, we've really grown. When I first got in it, we were still kind of, you know, a newer brand. I was one of the first stores in the Tampa Bay area. And now, look at some of these. Our, our, our growth, you know, um, well, we're at 16 now. The 17th store, if any of you guys live in the Carrollwood area, is opening next month, Northdale Mabry. Um, 
We hope to have 23 stores in the Tampa area by 2017. Entrepreneur Franchise 500, number 408. Fastest growing franchise, number 71. Franchise Gator, top 100, number two. Fast and Serious List, number 40. Top 100 Movers and Shakers. And I, and I firmly agree with, with every bit of all, all these rankings up here. So that's a little, uh, that's a little tidbit on kind of getting through that and where we're at today. Christina, all right. On behalf of the students and the faculty and the staff here at the uh, Lowe's Center, thank you for spending your time and sharing your story. We hope you can, all of you can stay around and network a few minutes. And thank you so much. And thank, really you. Appreciate it. thank you. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Thanks.